Hello and welcome back to Graceville. My name is Christy and I am a mom of five little ones ages four to 11. And on this channel, I share all things about encouragement, inspiration, and motivation for your home, for your life, and for your homeschool. This is going on my 10th year of homeschooling and I have something for everyone in the playlist. So if you're new here, welcome and please consider subscribing so that you can join the family and see what cool things I have to offer. So in today's video, this is a collaboration with Shalise over at Todd Buster Living. And I love Shalise. I've got to know her over the past maybe four or five years or so um and she is really amazing i really have a lot of love and respect for her i love the way that she stewards well the things that god has entrusted her with the things that she's been given i love seeing her challenges of how to take a little and make it go far on my channel i always say you can do a lot with a little and shalice is proof of that the way she stores her home well with little. So in this video, we are doing a collaboration where we're talking about how to begin budgeting. And so I want to give you four tips to help you begin budgeting, to help you just kind of get in a mindset of budgeting. And then I want to actually walk with you through setting up a budget. Like some of you haven't seen like, what is that? How do I do that? So I want to show you a couple of ways. I want to show you with someone who does not have enough money per month. And then I want to tell you like, okay, these are some adjustments they can make to make it work. I want to show you someone who has a little bit extra each month. And I want to show you um, some things that they can do with the excess. And then I want to show you someone who just makes um, the ends meet each month. And so they're right pretty much where they need to be. There's not a lot of extras in case something happens, but they have enough to make it each month with a few dollars left over. I do want to start this off by saying that budgets are like people. There's no two that are exactly alike and you need to do what works for your family. I'm just sharing in case it helps you, it inspires you, it blesses you in case maybe you needed to get a handle of this and this will encourage you. So the first tip is to list out all of your bills and your debts as well as list out all of the income that comes into your home. Tip number two is can you cut down or live without anything once you've made that list? And also along with tip number two is what do you have and what can you do, right? So what is it that you're good at? How can you use what God has gifted you with to be a blessing to your home? If you can bake, can you bake two extra cakes per week? If you're good with children, can you babysit one night per month for a date night or something like that? Um, what is it that you can do with what God has given you? Number three is to change your mindset. You really need so much less then you think you need to survive and just to live and to function. We don't need as much as we think we need and we don't need all the things that we think that we need. I encourage you to surround yourself with people that are speaking your language, that are speaking budget, that are speaking limit, that are saying, do you need that? People that are encouraging you to follow through with your goal, with your vision, not people who are saying, let's go shopping, there's a sale going on, um, let's go out to eat, because honestly, if you're a single family income, that's probably not in the budget. And if you'll come back um, next week or so, I'll be making a video and I'm hosting a collaboration about um, how we sacrifice and the things that we sacrifice so that we can homeschool. And having one income typically is one of those things. So can you take a look at podcasts um, or listen to podcasts? Can you watch videos with people who are talking about being debt free? Can you follow people who are on a debt free journey? So those for me are ways to just stay focused by surrounding myself with what it is that I'm trying to create and with the vision that I have in mind. And the fourth one honestly won't work for everyone, but it's to pray. Submit your request unto the Lord and to really talk to him about what's going on in your life. I mean, he knows anyway, but the thing is just to be open and honest with how you feel and just share with him that and pray about your finances, pray about your budget and, and seek him for 
what he can do, you know, to help you out. Again, kind of going back to um, tip number two, what do you have in your hands? You know, when we go to the Bible, it was so often where he would say, what do you have? And from what they had, he made the blessings. He provided the increase with a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread and a little bit of cornmeal. I just have enough for me and my son. We're going to die. He's like, oh, that's what you think. You think you're going to die. You're going to go in there in that kitchen and you're going to make it and it'll never run out. Like he is just that kind of a God where he takes little and he multiplies it. And that's why here at my channel, I've always said you can do a lot with a little because if you have him, he'll turn your little into a lot. All you do have to do is have the faith to believe it. So what I want to do is turn you around and I want to make up three budgets for you. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and just writing this out. You know, there are so many beautiful budget planners, budget stickers, all of the things. And honestly, you can break your budget just trying to plan for your budget. So I am, have been so inspired by Shalice just using a simple notebook. And although I have some budgeting sheets, I want to just keep it really simple so that even the person in the most debt who has nothing to spare has a piece of paper and has a pen and we can do this thing. So I'm just writing down the monthly take home pay, um, the income source one, two, if there's a bonus, I'm writing down the fixed expenses like mortgage, rent, utilities, water, trash, cable, internet, phone. Now keep in mind here, some people don't have water and trash. So then if not, there's an extra hundred in the bonus in this money already. Okay, variable expenses like gas, entertainment, dining out, clothing, health, beauty, groceries, now, again, I can't make this so that it fits everybody, but maybe you don't have health and beauty, but maybe you need diapers. You know, maybe you need, um, maybe that could be your like soap, tissue, paper towel type bill. Maybe that's included in your groceries. Maybe it's outside. I'm not sure. But again, I'm just providing a guideline for you. And then down at the bottom, we have debts, credit card one and two, car payment one and two, student loans one and two, because people typically have two credit cards, two vehicles, two loans. And then to the side, we have the emergency fund, retirement, savings, giving, and total. And I would suggest that the first thing you focus on is the emergency fund. And um, then we can get into a sinking fund, but that you don't worry about necessarily the extra to retirement or to college until you have um, at least your emergency fund until you're out of debt so for these um for this scenario i'm just using an income source of three thousand dollars for the month with a nine hundred dollar mortgage with two hundred dollar utilities with the hundred dollar water trash a hundred dollar cable hundred dollar internet hundred dollar phone bill and that brings that total to be about fifteen hundred dollars so now for the variable expense I'm just using 200 for the gas, 200 for the entertainment, $50 for the dining out, $20 for the clothing, $20 for the health and beauty, and $400 for the groceries. And that brings that total to $740. So for credit card one, I think I put down $40. For the car payment, I put down $350. For student loan one, $200. For student loan two, $200, bringing that total to $790. And for the emergency fund, or excuse me, and for the giving, $300 if you took the 10% of your tithes and paid that. So your total expense for the month is $3,000. And excuse me, your total income for the month was $3,000. Your total expense was $3,330. So it means you're negative $330. Okay, so when we don't have enough money, we can decrease our spend or increase the income. So first, you could get a side job to increase the money, or you can cut out some things. So I cut out health and beauty, clothing, dining, um, entertainment, and I cut out the cable. That gave us a bonus of $220. And um, I decided to go ahead and take $80 from the groceries just for that one month. So instead of $400 for the month for groceries, you've got... Um, $320, which means you're going to use your pantry and it means that you are going to shop on sale. So for this next scenario, I did increase the pay to $4,000 for the month and I left all the other numbers the same, the $1,500, the $740, the $790 with the debt. And what we'll see is the total income is $4,000 and total expenses 
$5,330. So you'll see that there are $670 left over this month. So I put $500 to the emergency fund. There's a balance of $170. And then I began just working out a sinking fund. What is a sinking fund? A fund where you tell your money where to go so when you need it, you have it. So $30 for a vacation, $30 for clothes, $20 for copay, $30 for homeschool books, $30 for maintenance, $30 for house projects. Um, and then at the end of the year, if you times that by 10 or by 12, you've got about $300 that you can have for your house project, for your maintenance, for your clothes, for those things. So we're in a good space. And last but not least, I did something similar. This time I used 3,500. And so you'll see that all the other numbers stayed exactly the same. But this time when we went ahead and did our subtractions, we had a balance of plus $170. So I did still set up a sinking fund. This one I did for pantry stock up. I did holiday, toys and books, clothes and shoes and house projects. But again, at the end of the year, you've got $300 for your pantry stock up. So whenever something's on sale, you're not going to take away from your home budget, but you are going to go ahead and use this stock up, this sinking fund money. And same with all the other things. When there's a sale, you're going to go to the envelope and you're not taking away from your monthly budget. So know every dollar has a name and a place. Okay guys, I really hope this video was a blessing for you. I hope that you learned something. I hope that something encouraged you, inspired you. If nothing else, just knowing that like everybody does not make six figures, seven figures, eight figures, you know, not everyone does that. And there are so many more people living pretty much minimum wage, paycheck to paycheck than you could ever imagine, especially during these times. So it's okay to say no, practice it, no. Do it again. No. Do it one more time. No. <laughs> no is the end. No, I can't go out to eat with you. I can't go shopping with you. No, I can't do those things. Yes, we can meal plan and we can cook together in. Yes, we can have coffee at each other's house. Yes, we can have a park play date. Yes, we can bake goodies. We can do things like that that are economic. But we not we can go to the thrift store when they have dollar days or half price days. Yes, we can shop that way. But we're not going to Nordstrom's. We're not going to Sephora. I don't need 50 million eyeshadows, lip glosses, and blush. I just need one. One good one that I love and I can just rock with that every day. I don't have to get my nails and my hair done every week. I can get it done once a year and I can maintain it myself the rest of the time. Remember, it's temporary. This too shall pass. So anyway. I won't hold you guys, but I'll just say thank you so much for tuning in. Do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends, and I'll see you back in my next video.